Everything you've learned thus far about the relationship between torque and horsepower is wrong. This is what it looks like. At some point, you're going to break something because you've got too much torque. I'm sure you've heard some famous phrase like horsepower sells cars and torque wins races. Or maybe horsepower is how fast you hit a wall and torque is how far you move the wall with you. I mean, those are funny and I can see how there's some truth to them, but I feel like they're mostly confusing. Today, I'm going to use this coffee mug my beloved employee gave me and this gold-plated Icon Ratchet from Harbor Freight to better explain to you the relationship between horsepower and torque. So torque is the turning ability of the engine, or as I call it, the force that the engine is putting out. And horsepower is the total force of the engine over time, or the total output over time, or, or like I, I like to call force over time. So you can take an object like a car and move from point A to point B, and it takes a certain amount of horsepower to move it from point A to point B in a, in a certain amount of time. You can actually measure horsepower by doing that, but you can't measure torque that way because they're not the same thing. So let's go back to the basics of an engine. All engines, eight cylinder, four cylinder, two stroke, four stroke. Let's not get into all that. I know some people are gonna talk about, well, two stroke has more explosions per four stroke or control burns. Just call them booms for simplicity. So piston goes up, there's a boom. Diesel, uh, methanol, uh, gas, all of them. There's some sort of boom, a controlled burn. So as the piston goes up, there's a boom and the piston comes back down. So torque is the amount of force being applied. Rotational force in the crankshaft down here is applied by the boom up here. So torque would be how big of an explosion you have up here. Horsepower is gonna be how many booms you have. And that is why horsepower is actually what wins races and torque breaks parts. That's a much better terminology for you guys to think of it as, is horsepower wins races, torque breaks parts. So let me show you what that looks like. So if you think of this as the amount of force being applied or the amount of torque being applied would be the size of the boom. So each one of these is one boom, one explosion. And we need to transfer this from point A to point B. There's multiple ways to do it. Now let's say we use the same amount of torque 10 times to move it from A to B in the same amount of time. So that would look like this. So that was 10 hits or 10 booms. It took 10 amounts of the same force to move this from point A to point B. So what if you wanted to do it in one hit? That would be the same horsepower, but a lot more torque. So if you were to take this coffee mug and move from here to there and have the same horsepower, but more torque, it would look like this. It moved the same distance, but it took a lot more force to go from point A to point B. And that's what happens with your dry shaft, your transmissions, and your crankshaft. Torque breaks parts, horsepower wins race. We can even check that out in our horsepower calculator. So let's hop on over and check that out. I just wanna go over the relationships between horsepower, RPM, and torque while looking at this chart. And this is pretty easy for people to understand that if horsepower goes up, oftentimes people think torque will continually go up which in some cases it will. You can see as I increase the horsepower, torque goes up. But let's flip the chart. So now torque is over here and horsepower is over there. Let's go back to 500 foot-pounds of torque, which is a very safe torque for a lot of applications. This would be thought of as how much force is being applied on your drive shaft, your transmission, your crankshaft, your piston, your rods, whichever one you think of it as. But let's leave torque exactly the same and just make RPMs go up. Look what happens to horsepower. Torque stays the same and horsepower keeps going up. So you can infinitely increase your horsepower 
and maintain the same foot pounds of torque as long as you can just continue spinning the motor faster and cramming in all that air and fuel. So that's a, I like, that's how I like to demonstrate the relationship between horsepower and torque on a chart. This is how big the boom is and this is how many booms are happening. And if you can keep your boom smaller, you can make more horsepower, go faster, go down the track with less problems as long as you keep torque low. The problem with diesels, if you make 500 horsepower at 3,000 RPMs, that's 875 foot-pounds of torque. That is a lot of torque and that's what breaks parts. Something that's super dangerous is if you use nitrous, because nitrous is insta-power. It's like turbo in a bottle. You can make as much power as you want as long as you've got all that fuel there. With a turbo, you at least have to wait for it to spool, but if you're at 2,000 RPMs with the converter locked and dumping all that fuel, and you spray that diesel, and you spray that nitrous, suddenly you're making lots of torque. Humongous amounts of torque. That can break parts very quickly. So if you make 1,000 horsepower at 4,500 RPMs, like many trucks do, it's only 1,100 foot-pounds of torque. You make that same horsepower at 2,000 RPMs, that's gonna break some shit.